Welcome to our Sunday Monday Sunday morning worship service. <laughs> Welcome to all of our online viewers. Everybody, let's give a round of applause for our online congregation joining us this morning. For those of you online, go ahead and press that like and share button. In the book of Psalms 118.24, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. I want to invite all of you guys to stand up and worship with us as we go ahead and begin our Sunday morning service. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So grateful to be here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. Let's let's join me. <laughs> I get amnesia. I forget that you keep coming around. Yeah, ain't no way you'll never let me down. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. I hope you'll find me. Praise in your name. I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like sun in the morning, I know you're going to be there every day. So what on earth would make me be afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Come on guys, tell me is he good? He's good. Tell me is he God? He's God. He is good God, God Almighty. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noon time, praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning, love him in the noon time, love him when the sun goes down. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praise your name no matter what comes. Yes, cause I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I can pray. Father God, thank you, Father God, for letting us be here and praising your name, Father God, because it's better to be here than over there, Father God, and we're just so grateful for you, Father God. Amen.
grateful to be here, Father God, where we can experience your love. Father God, we come before you and we thank you, Father God. You are so faithful, Father God. Your word says that you are faithful, that when we call, you will answer us, Father God. We, we are. Your word says that when we seek you with our whole hearts, we will find you, Father. We come before you this morning seeking you, Father God, asking you, Father, to be here to open our hearts and let us be ready to receive the word that is about to go forth, Father God. We come before you this morning and we proclaim your glory upon this house. This, your glory upon the people watching online this morning, Father God. And we proclaim that nothing, no one, no devil in hell, no demon in hell will stop us from getting your word, your light, your life, your gospel out to your people. And devil, we come at you this morning and we proclaim that nothing and no one, nothing you throw at us will ever stop us from proclaiming our, our God's word, from proclaiming the glory of our Lord. You can come at us one way, but your word but the Lord, the word of the Lord says that you will flee seven ways. We stand upon that word of the God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord Almighty. And we come at you with everything that he has deposited in us. And we proclaim this morning the glory of God, the peace of God, the freedom of God yes. upon his people. You have Praise no God. right, yes. no authority, no power over them anymore. We 
break every bond. We break every chain. We break every attack, every evil word, everything spoken against his people. We break it now by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that you have no right, no authority to trample us anymore. For you belong under our feet. And we have given the authority by our Lord to trample over snakes and scorpions. And that is what you are. You are a snake under our feet, crushed by our heel. In the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you and we thank you, Father, this morning for the authority, the blessing, the honor to come before you and glorify your name this morning, Father God. We praise you this morning and we ask you that you will lend your ear to your people this morning. Lend your heart out and hear our hearts cry this morning as we come before you, Father. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you, Father God, for everything you have done in, through, for our lives, Father God. And we ask you to continue to use us as your vessel, Father, in every way, in everything, Father God. We praise you. We worship you, Father God. And in Jesus' mighty, mighty name, we say amen, amen. and amen. Saints, as we slow down this service today, we're going to be opening up the altar. If you have anything that you want to come and lay at his feet, any worship, any praise reports, or any burdens that have been heavy upon you, we invite you to come and lay it at his altar. Everybody online, your altar is right there in front of you. The altar is now open. Great are you, Lord, Father God. everything beautiful in your timing, Father God. Thank you. 
your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out Amen. Hallelujah, Father God. We breathe every breath to you, Father God. And all the glory goes to you, Father God. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pour out our praise, Father God. We pour out our praise this morning. Come on, saints, let us pour out our praise this morning. We got to worship him. Let's give him a praise this morning. Let us give him a praise this morning for the breath out of our lungs. Come on, somebody, carries power and might. And we are thankful. We are thankful that we get to praise him. Because if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out, as the Bible says. So if the rocks are going to cry out and praise him, I will praise him. I'm not going to let a rock out praise me this morning. I am going to worship him. So let us worship him this morning with a shout of praise. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Father, that you, you pour out your goodness, Father, upon our lives, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you love us, Lord, right where we're at. Right where we're at, Father. That we don't have to get perfect, Lord, just to honor you, just to serve you, just to be in your presence, Lord. That you will take us right where we're at. And I thank you, Father God, Lord, for that love and your power, that patience, Lord, that you are willing to work with us, love us, stretch us, and pour out upon us, Lord. So we honor you this morning, Lord. We worship you with the praise, Father, Lord. We worship you with the honor of praise, Lord, for you are glorious, Lord. For you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy of, of all praise. You're worthy of everything, Lord. Everything, Father God, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And we all say amen, amen, amen. Come on, let us give it up for God. Let us give it up for God. God is good. God is good. He is good. Come on, somebody. Yeah. So you may be seated. We want to welcome all our online viewers. We love you. Come on, somebody. We love you. God has a word for you today. God has a word for each and every one of you today. He has a word for you because he loves you. He loves you. So all our online viewers today, uh, put your seatbelt on because God has a word for you. God has a word for you. So today I want to I wanna talk to you about partaking. About partaking in the suffering of Jesus this morning. I want to talk to you about partaking in the suffering of of Jesus this morning. But first, I'm going to give us a global perspective. First, I'm going to I'm going to give us a a global perspective of what is happening in the world. 
I'm going to give us a global perspective of what is happening in the world today. See, when somebody is spiritually mature, check this out. When somebody is spiritually mature, you don't have to explain a lot. When somebody is, is spiritually mature, you don't have to explain a lot. Because in 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, right? So it says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Because they're, they're foolish, right, to the natural man, right? So, so a spiritual mature person, right, does not have to explain a lot, right? See, the Bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of God, cannot understand the things of the Spirit. But when you are spiritual, you know the root cause of what is going on. When, when, you, are, when you are spiritually mature, you are going to know the root cause of what's going on. See, what does the natural man do when things aren't going someone's way? Right? When, when the natural man, when things aren't going his way, right? When things aren't, aren't going the, the, the way he planned them to go, what does he do? He begins to complain. He begins to complain to others. Or he even blames God for it, right? But what I want to suggest to you this morning, that it doesn't come from God when everything bad or wrong happens to you. Uh, I want you guys to understand that. Not everything comes from God. When something bad, right, or wrong happens to you. In 1 John 2, 27, it says, But you have received the, Sp the Holy Spirit, and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true for the spirit teaches you everything you need to know and what he teaches you is true that it is not a lie so just as he has taught you remain in fellowship with christ See, we don't blame God, right? We, we, we don't blame God for the things we don't understand. We ask the Holy Spirit for guidance and answers, right? This is what we do. We, we ask the Holy Spirit for guidance and answers. And when someone is speaking against you, don't go to those, right? Don't go, right, to those around you, right? Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the heart of that brother and sister. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? Spiritually mature, right, doesn't mean we go and complain. Doesn't mean that, that we blame God, right? If we don't understand something, what do we do? We go to God. And we ask God, right, we ask God to 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 give us revelation, right, of the heart of that brother and sister, right? So before we move forward, I want us to all to stand up real quick, and we're going to say this prayer together. We're going to say this prayer together. So let us repeat this. God, God. 
sorry. I'm sorry for complaining. For complaining. I'm, sorry I'm sorry if I question you, if I question you. For, anything for anything that I'm going through. That I'm going through. I just want, I just want to, worship to worship you. you. In Jesus' mighty name, we say amen. amen. So you can be seated now. See, when we look at the global perspective of every believer in ministry, right, is, is being shaken right now. Let's just be real. If we go and look at this at a global perspective of what's going on right now, Every believer in ministry is being shaken right now. Things are, are being shaken. See, God is shaking things all up, all around, worldwide. He is shaking things. In Ephesians 6.12, it says, For we do not wrestle. It says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Right? So it's not against our brother and sister. It's not against the people. Right? It's against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We are up against the, a battle against the evilness that's in this world, which is spiritual. There's a spirit behind every action. These are demons that are, that are tempting you to get you focusing on the person instead of on the spirit, right? And we see that going on right now in America. We see it going on globally, right? Everybody's blaming everybody. But we're not blaming the right blame to the right part, which is the devil, which is the enemy. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. That's where our fight is at. It's against the enemy. We got to take it to the enemy. In other words, our spiritual battle is not against a person, but the what? The devil. See, we got to know these things because we get blindsided. We get blindsided, right? We get upset when somebody cuts us off. We get upset when it doesn't go our way. We get upset at the things we see on the news. We get upset, right? And what is taking place right now? People are tearing each other apart. But what is, what is the root problem? The root problem, it's, it's an evil spirit. That is, is tearing people apart. It's an evil spirit. And if we could start to focus and our perspective can get on the right thing, which is not the people, right? Which is a spirit because they're blinded. They, don't, they can't see right. See, when I was growing up, I was doing, I was running the streets. I was not seen right. I wasn't seen right, right? See, it was a spirit that, that, that was lying to me, making me feel that, that, that my, uh, the other street was against me, making me feel that they don't like me. Making me feel that, that the world hates me, right? 
that, that the cops are always out to get me. Right, every time, and, and what happened when I, when I started to think in that aspect, I'm going to be real, and, and when I started to think in that aspect, every time I walked out of the house, let me tell you something, the cops rode by. They were always pulling me over. I, w- I was always getting jammed up, right? I was always getting locked up because I was inviting it. I was invited because because I was on the people. My perspective was on people, right? My perspective was on the on the people, and it wasn't on the right place. Knowing that the, our fight is not with the people, our fight is with wickedness. Our fight is against principalities because Apostle Paul was letting us know the insight to what is going on in the world. And let me tell you something, these demons have never changed. They've always been here. The principalities have always ruled this earth. Jesus also said, what did Jesus say? The prince of the air. He called the devil what? The prince of the air, the prince of this world. What does that mean? That's an insight. Who is behind all this evilness? It's the devil. We just witnessed a, a, a shooting, and it, and, it, and it tore me up inside. The pain of what, of what the families are going through, right? But what, what was behind all of it? It was an evil spirit. It was an evil spirit trying to come for our children. It's an evil spirit that are trying to hurt people. It's an evil spirit that make people feel that they are less of. It's an evil spirit, right? And, and, And the Bible clearly lets us know what is going on. This is why we gotta take responsibility. And we got to start to understand it's not the people, it is the devil the devil is responsible but remember there are areas in our lives come on somebody that we are responsible for too come on somebody i'm gonna be real here i'm gonna be real yes the devil is responsible for a lot of things but then there is areas in our lives that we are responsible as well because we gave legal rights to the enemy to infiltrate because we weren't following the principles and the values of god's scripture and we opened up a door right and what ended up happening The enemy comes in, right, and he starts to play games with our minds, right? And then we're over here blaming everybody else when we should have been what? We should have been following the principles of Scripture. So a lot of times it's our our responsibility as well. We are responsible for leaving the windows and doors open. So we got to own our responsibilities. Some things we got to own our responsibilities and, and own up to our mistakes because we gave the enemy legal rights through those entryways. See, we often operate off of emotions. A lot of times, the first thing we do is we operate on emotions, which is an entryway for the devil. But see, today we're going to revoke those rights and close those entryways this morning. Come on, somebody. There is hope in Jesus. There is hope in the power of God. And this is why we come here today, because we come to pray together, right? And together, when we pray together with the power of God, we will expose the enemy and we will close the entryways and the windows of Satan so he cannot torment us no more. This is why we come every morning. This is why we, we come every morning because 
every morning on Sunday so we could get nuggets. God, is, God wants to expose the, the, the craftiness of the enemy, right? Because a lot of times we don't understand what's going on, right? But, we, but when we gravitate to the word of God, right? And we gravitate to, to how the enemy operates, right? And, and what is really going on, right? That gives us a good indication of how to close the windows so we can find freedom. Because God loves us. God doesn't want to see us depressed. God doesn't want to see us hurt. He loves us. So what does he do? He he sends people, right, to speak life into us, to pray, right? And when, and when, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, what else happens? We want more of the Spirit of God, right? So, so what do we do? We go. We go to the places where we could get fed. We need to be filled with the power and the goodness of God so we can make the right decisions. See, God didn't call us to be lone rangers, right? But even the lone ranger had Tonto. Come on, somebody. He, at least he had Tonto, right? See, we weren't called to to do this Christian walk by ourselves. We were called to to be an assembly. That means together, right? Together, to love one another, right? To love, to pray for one another, to be there for one another, right? This is why we come together to church. Look at in Ephesians 4.27, it says, And do not give the devil an opportunity. Why does it say that in Ephesians? Because Apostle Paul is trying to bring us up on game. He's trying to lace us up. Right? He's like, man, you better be laced up before you go in that battle. You better lace up your boots. Right? Don't be going in there with no chanclas and flip-flops, you know what I mean? Like, um, you better be laced up. So he says, don't give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge. Come on, somebody. Or, or, or anger, right? Or, or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. We got to let that stuff go. Amen? Amen. We got to let that bitterness go. We can't be be harboring resentment towards one another. See, we're going to take a stand this morning. We're going to take a stand this morning. Let us all say this this prayer again. We're going to pray together. I'm telling you, there is power in prayer. And and this house is is a house of prayer. We believe in the power of prayer because prayer carries power. And there is power on this house. And let me tell you something. The power on this house and the power of prayer is going to set you free going to set you free. So let us all say this together. In the name of Jesus, we stand against the enemy, against the demons in hell. We stand now and we raise up the remnant of God. We raise up in the spirit And we declare victory of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us say victory. Say, I have victory today. I have victory today. I'm leaving it at the altar of Christ's feet today. Say, I'm leaving it at his feet today. All bitterness, all anger. All grudges, grudges. I lead it, I I leave it at his feet. feet. And I'm declaring victory victory. over my life today. today. Heal me, Father God. God. Give me clarity, Father God. Give me me understanding, Father God. God. 
Display your love upon me, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout victory. Victory. I'm going to have victory today. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. See, God, God is calling on his end-time army. God is calling on his end-time army. You guys may be seated. God is calling his end-time army. And when I look in this room, I see soldiers. Come on, somebody. You're a soldier. Come on, somebody. We're all soldiers, right? And a lot of times, what, what happens with soldiers? We get wounded, right? We get shot up in battle, right? We get shot up. But let me tell you something. This is why we come together, so we could get healed, right? We come in the presence of God, so God can heal us, right? We, 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 uh, we let things go, right? We come to his cross and, 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 and we let resentment go. We, we ask for forgiveness, right? Because we know there's a power within each and every one of us, right? And the devil doesn't want you to use that power. The devil wants you to keep thinking on the bitterness, the resentment, the pain, the hurt, right? And when we stay focused on those types of things, what happens? Depression comes in. Right? But when, but when we focus on the goodness of God and we focus on the victory that was done on the cross and when we start to speak life over ourselves, let me tell you something. There is power in the tongue because the tongue can speak life or death, right? So when you start to declare over your life who you are in the name of Jesus, right? And start to say, I am a child of God. And you start to say, I was made wonderfully. And when you start to say, I am chosen. Well, let me tell you something. That's who you are. You are loved. You are chosen. You are created with your own spirit special way you were created each and every one of us were created with specialty and you need to know that and we need to walk in that right and when we walk in that that means we're giving honor to God because we're saying God you did not make a mistake you knew what you were doing when you created me Right, And we give honor to God, and we glorify God. And when we start to glorify God, there's a power within us, right, which is God, which is the Christ, come on somebody, which is the Holy Spirit, right? It starts to be glorified, it starts to take place, and we have victory. And the enemy cannot get us in that arena no more. Because our powers are not against people. We do not wrestle against people, but against the powers and rulers of darkness. In Ephesians 6.13, it says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. See, we don't stand on emotions. We don't stand on feelings. We stand on the word of God. See, I may look crazy, like I, like I lost my mind, right? But, but will I continue to stand on the word of God? See, a lot of times we get embarrassed, right? We, we're out there in public, right? And the world is doing one thing, right? And, and we, we, don't, we want to blend into the world, right? But we don't, we don't want to stand on the word of God, right? But let me tell you something. When you stand on the word of God, wherever you are, you may look crazy, right? You may look like you lost your mind, right? But let me tell you something. In God's eyes, you are precious. You are mighty. You are powerful. God 
God is with you. And I want to I want to encourage you. Don't be ashamed to stand on the word of God when we are out there in public. Don't be ashamed to declare the love of Jesus. Don't be de don't be ashamed to know that you are a daughter of the most high. Don't be ashamed to say I am a queen of the most high. Don't be ashamed to say and declare that the love of Jesus, he died on the cross for me. Don't be ashamed to tell a dying and broken world. Don't be ashamed to tell them that Jesus loves you. When you see somebody broken and confused with anger and they, and they have so much grudges going on, right? Don't be ashamed to tell them Jesus loves you. Let me pray for you. Jesus can save you. Jesus has power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the cross. Oh, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Because that's who we are. We stand on the word of God. And when we stand against the enemy, what does he do? He flees. Because there's power in his word. And when we start to speak his word, what happens? The devil flees, right? In James 4, 7, it says, Therefore, what? Submit to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, there's power in his word. We got to keep fighting. We got to keep pushing forward. And we submit to the power of God. We submit to his holy word. And when we submit to his holy word and resist the devil, right? That means resisting temptation. That means resisting the ways of this world. Resisting all the things that we see in this society, right? And we resist it, right? And he will flee from you. When we stand on the principles of God. When we stand on his word that carries power. See, God didn't give you that sickness. He didn't give you that problem. God did not give you that sickness and God did not give you that problem. But God permits and allows things in our lives that are beyond our control. And you probably ask, why? Why does God do this? Why does this happen? But let me tell you something. In Psalm 7, 8, it says, The Lord shall judge the people. And it says, Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within him. See, God proves, he tries, and he tests the hearts of his people. He will test each and every one of us. Every day is a test. We are tested, right? So, the, so let me tell you something. The problems that we see, right, is sometimes beyond our control. Because God tests his people. Are you going to serve me? Are you going to follow me? When all hell breaks loose, are you going to follow me? Are you going to be committed to me? Are you going to trust me? See, he's measuring your prayer life. He's measuring your giving. He's measuring your commitment and loyalty. See, the Lord allows things so the people will know what he is in their hearts. He allows things so you can know. So you can know. Right? See, every time God allows things in our lives, the Bible calls that suffering. Bobby, can we get some music? I know. You feel pain. 
We all feel pain. I feel pain. I feel suffering. I feel at times it's hard, right? I feel that, that there's no way out sometimes, right? How is this going to happen? How is this, how is this church going to grow? How do, I, how do I help this person the best way I can, God? I'm not God. I need you, Lord. I need your, your knowledge, right? It's not easy. Life's not easy. I get it. God gets it. We all get it. We all feel the pain. But I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you because in 1 Peter 4, 13, it says, but rejoice. It says, but rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings. That, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad and exceedingly joyful. Right? So when, when he buses through, when all, when all things look glim, when all things don't look like there is no way out, right? But you don't give up on the almighty power of God, right? And you stand firm on his power. And you stand firm in prayer. And you stand firm in his love. Let me tell you something. When you see everything looking chaotic, but you stand firm in the battle. And then when God comes through, come on somebody, when he comes through with power and might it is partaking of something almighty powerful that means you partake in the suffering of Jesus because Jesus suffered on the cross for you Jesus suffered on the cross for me he suffered for a dying world so he can offer life and sometimes we got to partake in the suffering of Christ we don't have to go to the cross right because Jesus already did it for us for our iniquities but sometimes we got to trust in him we got to partake in him we got to praise him we got to rejoice with him when we are suffering and partaking in his suffering because Jesus suffered on the cross yes I get it but your sufferings are different I get it I get our, our sufferings are different than, than Jesus See, he died physically for you. Now you die to self for him to live in you. He died physically, but we need to die ourselves, our fleshly selves, so he can live and reside within us. Yes, I get it. It's different. See, he will test your heart to see if you will give him your ambition, your career, and family. But be careful what you say. Your words will be tested. In 1 Peter 4, 16, it says, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. And let him glorify God in this matter. And then 1 Peter 4.19 it says, Therefore let those who suffer accordingly to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good at, as to a faithful creator. See, you're going to be criticized. You will be persecuted when you live righteously and preach God's word and believe in the supernatural. We are living in those times, saints. I can't tell you all things are going to be good. I can't tell you that we're going to walk 
through a park, right? They have a, a Sunday walk in the park, right? I can't tell you that this faith walk is a cake walk. I can't tell you that. Because the Bible says we are going to partake in the suffering. But I am going to tell you, we are living in those times, saints. And sometimes we are going to have to be criticized. Sometimes you are going to be persecuted. But will you stand the faith? We have brothers and sisters right now on the other side of the world that are being persecuted that are dying and they are not bowing down to this world. They are not denying the love of Christ. They are not denying it. They stand, they stand preaching God's word. They believe in the supernatural all the way to the end. And God wants to strengthen us today when we truly live for Him, when we truly love Him, when we truly have a relationship with Him and pray to Him and trust in Him that we will be okay because we are with Him. It doesn't matter what this world does to us. It doesn't matter what happens in this world because this world is going away anyways. One day this world will all crumble. But the only thing that will stand is the kingdom of God. That is the only thing that will withstand and His holy word will stand the test of time. See, God is looking for somebody that wants to partake with him. Somebody that is willing to have a relationship with him. Somebody that is willing to walk with him. Are you willing, saints? Are you willing to walk with him? Are you willing to have a new life with Him? Are you willing to be renewed today with Him? Are you willing to renounce the things that are in your life that still are attached to the world? Are you willing to renounce them today to live fully for Him, to glorify him to honor him because I will tell you this and I can promise you this because the Bible promises you this we will all walk on that glorious day on the pearly streets streets of gold we will dance and rejoice in heaven there will be no more pain there will be no more suffering there will just be joy there will be laughter. There will be praises forever, for eternity. That I could promise you if you renounce today the things that are holding you back. You're the only ones that know the things that are holding you back from fully submitting it all to God. And saying, Lord, I am perfect. I'm not perfect, Lord. And you'll take me just the way I am. Broken, lost, angry, suffering, bitterness. Right? God doesn't care what your problem is. All he cares is, do you trust him? That's all he cares. Do you trust me, he says. Do you trust me? Do you trust him, saints? Do you trust him today with everything? Do you trust him today? Are you willing to go that extra mile for him 
and pray to him and say, Lord, I trust you because I can't do this on my own. I can't do it. I need you. I need your guidance. I need your knowledge. I need your power. I need your love to teach me to love because I don't know how to love. I'll mess things up. I'll tear it down in my natural self. I need God. I need him every day to help correct me, to help display his power to me, to help display patience to me, love to me, joy to me, knowledge, wisdom. I need God. I need him every day. And the day I don't have him is the day I will mess up is the day I'll mess up. Is the day I'll, I'll open up that window and guess who comes in? He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting to come in and to tear up our lives. He's waiting. But are you willing today to give it all to God? Are you ready? Are you ready to, to give up that, that little piece that you're holding on. Because right now when I, I look in this room, I see soldiers, right? But I also see we still holding on to things. We're still holding on. Maybe it's money. I don't know. Maybe it's our pride, right? I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. That, you, that you're still holding on to, or fully letting go, because, because you're, 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 you're afraid of change, right? You think you got this down. We don't got nothing down. All we got is to offer. Every day we have to offer. We gotta offer. We gotta offer to God. Every day, a little bit of ourself dies because we're offering. We're offering up our flesh. We're offering up the way we think. We're offering up the way we talk. We're offering it all up to him. We're saying, Lord, take this. Lord, take this. I don't need this, Lord. Lord, I don't want this no more. Lord, I don't want to think like this no more. Lord, I don't want to talk like this no more. Lord, I don't want to feel like this no more. Lord, please help me take this, Lord. And every day we're offering. We're offering. It's, a, it's called the great exchange where we offer up ourselves and God gives us the treasures of heaven. And that means he trusts us with the powers of heaven. He trusts us with the riches of heaven, which are knowledge, which is love, which is joy, right? Which is wisdom. All these, these beautiful, powerful attributes that help us in life, help us succeed in life, help us grow in life, help us to display heaven. So are you willing? All of us, even me, I, I, got, I still got to give up stuff for the Lord. I'm not up here trying to preach, I got it all together, because then I'm blaspheming the Holy Spirit, then I'm a liar. I need God. I need Him every day to guide me. Guide me. Let me tell you something, when we have that great exchange, and we start to get the, 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 the goodness of heaven in our hearts. Let me tell you. And when we go out into society, do you know what that is? That's the kingdom of God breaking out. That's the kingdom of God breaking out in the atmosphere that you are holding. 
Because the world is pulling you out, right? The world is pulling all the darkness, sadness, chaos. The world pulls, right? And God draws you in. He draws you into the things of God, right? And then when you're drawn into the things of God and then you go out into society, what are you thinking? You you know what, what is going on right there? You are changing the atmosphere. You are shifting the atmosphere from all the chaos, doubt, darkness, all that stuff because your presence is a carrier of the kingdom of God. So when you go and invade a space, it's the kingdom of God invading that space. And you can shift things. But we have to exchange. We got we got to keep exchanging ourselves to God every day. We got to say, "Lord, help me today. I don't know how to do this. Help me." today. I don't know how to do this. Help me today. Help me today. So if you guys can all stand up right now. Let us reflect. Let us take a moment and reflect on the Word of God. Let us take a moment and reflect on what we need to give up today. What we need, what we need to surrender to God today. And I'll guarantee you this. If you are sincere, God will invade your space. God will change the atmosphere. God will heal you. God will deliver you. God will free you. He will free you of doubt. He will free you of complacency. But are you willing to give him to him? Are you willing to, to come to that great exchange today? Because every Sunday, we get keys of heaven. Every Sunday, we release things to God. Every Sunday, we receive new things. Every Sunday. And let me tell you, when I look around, I see people's lives changing from the day you walked in to day. day. I've seen growth. I've seen change. And that is the power of God. Because it's only God that can change your life. It's only God, the power of heaven, that can change your situation. Come on, somebody. So let us take this time in reflection right now. What is it? What is it that you need to offer up to God today? What is it that you need to offer up to God today? What is it that you need to offer up to God today? Don't push back on him. Offer it up. Offer it up today. So I'm going to give you this time to reflect. Online viewers, repeat this prayer because God wants to give you life and life more abundantly. He wants to exchange your hurt and depression and alcoholism today. He wants to take, He wants to take that 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 bond of alcoholism. There's somebody that is viewing that is still drinking and and it's bringing you to a place of depression there's somebody out there that that is still drinking and and, and you're feeling a, a depression and you're wasting your money and you keep thinking 
It's going to buy you happiness. But all it did is bankrupt you spiritually and physically. So God wants you to give it to him today. So say this prayer, saints. Lord, say it like you mean it, saints. Say, Lord, Lord I, give I give my problem to you, to you. because I know, because I know. You, have you have the power to set me free. Set me free. So, Lord, Lord, it's all yours. It's all yours. I, give I give it to you. Liberate me, Father. Liberate me, Father. Set me free, Father. I bind, I bind this problem, this problem to, you. to you. I give it, I give it to, you. to you, for it is yours. It is yours. For, your Bible says, for your Bible says, your yoke, your yoke is, easy, is easy, and your burden, and your burden is, light. is light. So I take, so I take my burden, and I give it to you. And I ask that you give me your burden, which is light, and your yoke, which is easy. Set me free, Lord. Today, heal me, Lord. I give it all to you. I thank you, Lord, for your love. For your, power, for your power, for your goodness. Take a moment of silence. Let him speak to you right now. What is he speaking to you? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just lift up this time to you, Father God, Lord. Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, that your, your goodness reigns in this house, Father, Lord. I pray that all the prayers that, that were lifted up, Father, Lord, I pray that there would, there would be a great exchange, Lord. I pray, Father, Lord, that your power, Father, Lord, that will heal the brokenhearted, Father, Lord. I pray that your power, Father God, Lord, will heal the brokenness of their mind, Father God, Lord. I pray, Father God, Lord, that there will be a renewing today Father God, Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, that there will be a resetting today, Father God, Lord, that you will reset them in the right direction, Father God, Lord, that you will plant their feet on solid ground today, Father God, Lord, which is the foundation of Jesus Christ, which is the foundation of the kingdom of God. I pray that today because you your word says your kingdom cannot be shaken. So, Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, that they will experience your power right now in the name of Jesus. I pray right now your power down. I pray right now your power in their heart. I pray right now a refreshing of your, of your power, Father God. Refresh their hearts, Father God, Lord. Refresh their spirit, Father God, Lord. Renew their mind, Father God, Lord. Let them feel your goodness, Father God, Lord. Let them Feel your holy power, Father God, Lord. Oh, Lord, break them, Father God, Lord. Break them right where they're at, Father God, Lord. I pray right now that there will be a breaking, a breaking of that anger right now in the name of Jesus. I pray with the hammer of God that will shatter it, that will dismantle it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that your love, Father God, will abound, Father God, that your love still abounds more and more Father God, Lord, with knowledge and all discernment, Father God, Lord. I pray right now that your power and your word, Father God, Lord, will penetrate deep into the hearts, Lord, will penetrate right now, Father God, Lord, will penetrate healing, Father God, Lord, will remove all the darkness and all the things, Father God, Lord, that are holding them back to your goodness, Father God, Lord, that they may receive your holy power today, Father God, Lord, that they may receive all of heaven today. I pray 
pray all the warring angels right now down in the name of Jesus. I pray that the warring angels will fill up this space, Father Lord. I pray right now that there will be a weight lifted off their shoulder right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father Lord, all that doubt and anger and all the discomfort right now, all of it will be uplifted in the name of Jesus. I pray your goodness down, Father God, Lord. I pray your power down, Father God, Lord. I pray that you'll saturate them right now in your precious blood, Father God, Lord. I pray your precious blood, Father God, Lord, will saturate them with life, Father God, Lord. Life, Lord, that you'll bring back, Father God, their dry bones, Father God, Lord. I pray right now that you'll resurrect, Father God, Lord, their resurrected life, Father God, Lord. You'll bring them back, Father God, to life today, Father God, Lord, with power and might, Father God, Lord. I pray right now, Father Lord, as they offer up to you, Father God, Lord, as they give it all to you, Father God, Lord. They may not know what they're doing right now, Father God, Lord, but they will have a revelation tonight, Father God, Lord. They will feel a freedom tonight, Father God, Lord. They will feel a cleaning tonight, Father God, Lord. I pray all the contamination right now. We pray against it right now in the name of Jesus. I call out any unclean spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I break it right now with the power of God. I bind it right now with the power of God. We come against the strong man right now in the name of Jesus. I pray all divination right now. We come against it right now. We come against any word that was spoken against each and every person in this room. We break it and dismantle it right now with the power of God. Oh Lord, I pray against every witchcraft, every spell that was spoken, that was casted. Oh, we break it right now with the power of God. We dismantle it right now. All generational curses, we break and dismantle that right now in the name of Jesus. I pray freedom over the people right now. I'm feeling the chains are breaking right now. I'm feeling right now there's a breaking going on in the spiritual realm right now. Oh, there's a breaking going on right now in the spiritual realm. There's a breaking right now. Chains are falling. Oh, you're being set free right now. You're being set free right now in the name of Jesus. No power in hell can come up against the power of God. There ain't no power in hell can come up against the power of God because the power of God is the God that created this world. The power of God is the God that created all things. The power of God is what created all the stars. The power of God is what created the ocean. The power of God is what created the mountains. The power of God is what created all the stars, the sun, the moon. Oh, the power of God is here today. The power of God that created all things is creating life in you today. The power of God is creating life in you today, right now. Declare it right now in the name of Jesus. Declare my freedom today. Declare it right now. Declare it right now with your mouth. Declare your freedom over your life right now in the name of Jesus. Say it. Say freedom. freedom. Say freedom. freedom. Say I'm set free today. Say I'm set free today. Say I'm set free today. Ain't no devil in hell coming after me no more because I have the power of God and I stand on the power of his word and I know who I am I'm made wonderful and I count it all joy when I go through various trials because I know my Lord goes before me and I know I know my Lord is with me and I know my Lord has won the battle already and I have victory today and my victory relies on the Lord Almighty come on say freedom say freedom I'm set free today. Ain't no, ba ain't no bond. Come on, that's coming against me. No more. 
in the name of Jesus. Come on, let us give God a praise right now. Let's give God a praise right now. You feel that? You guys feel that? It's called freedom. It's called freedom. the love of our Father did when he died on that cross. He gave us freedom. And we don't have to live in bondage no more. We don't have to live with the lies no more. Because he did it for us. He did it for you because he loves you. He knows you by name. Your name is written in the book of life. He knows every tear, every suffering. He knows it all. But he chose you because he loves you. And he wants to let you know today, I've never left you and I've never forsaken you. And I'm always with you and I'm always going to go before you. And you're going to have victory today in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God is good? All the time? Amen. 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 Oh, God is good. I love him. I just want to stay right here with his presence. But, but we got to keep it moving, right? We got to keep it moving, right? All right. So right now is um, our time to uh, transition to our tithes and offering. So give a warm welcome to my lovely wife, Pastor Catherine. Amen, amen. Who else is standing a little bit taller this morning? Amen. Everybody can have a seat at this time before we get into it. We do have a few announcements. So tomorrow night, we invite everybody in-house and online. Tune in to Chapel of Change Dallas. We're going to be going live tomorrow night for our night of spiritual warfare, where we pray for the city of Oak Cliff, the community of Oak Cliff, the city of Dallas, the state, our country, and anything that every, anybody needs. If you have any prayer requests, if you would like to speak to us, tell us your prayer requests now, you can give them to us now or send them in online. If you don't want to send, put it in the comments, message us directly. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. We want to break some bonds because how many know, just as Pastor Simon said, there is power in prayer. Wednesday night, we're going to be right back here in-house and online for our, our midweek Bible study. So we invite you to come on out at uh, 7.15 p.m. right here uh, online or in-house to join us for midweek. Get a little midweek fill up of the Holy Ghost. Thursday night, man, where, where are you at, man? All right, man, Thursday night we have Zoom and online uh, a, a, a Bible study for you men, for Kingsmen. So we invite you, if you don't have the Zoom information, get with Pastor Simon, get with one of the men, uh, get the information and tune in because Pastor Simon all, always brings an on-time fire word for you men to be encouraged and continue to press through. Women, where's my women at? Oh, only a couple of women in here? All right, let's try that again. Where's my women at? That's better. All right, women, we have our Abide Women's Bible Study on Zoom and on Facebook every Friday night at 7 p.m. If, if you're new here, if you don't have the information yet, get with myself, get with one of the ladies in-house, get the information. We want you to tune in and be encouraged. Every Friday night, we have our, our little bit of worship. We have prayer. We have an encouraging word. We want you to tune in and get encouraged to be uplifted because we're not only here to help to bring more more of the word to you, but we want to build you up so that you can stand on the word of God and be confident in who you are as daughters of the king. Amen. Saturday. Saturday, I believe this Saturday, we have our um, our youth, another youth fundraiser coming up, which we have a garage sale coming up. So if anybody, if you have anything you don't want, and any clothes, any furniture, anything at all, you'd like to donate to help the youth because we want to do things with the youth. We want to help uh, 
send them to different things, do different activities with them, and we also bring them in and teach them the word of God. We want to continue to reaching out to each out to them. So if you have anything you would like to donate so that we can uh, put it out there to help raise money to do more things for the youth and bring them in off the street, please, we ask you to go ahead and get in contact with one of us, and we will, uh, um, we will be more than glad to take that stuff in. Uh, next Sunday, we'll be right back here in-house for our Sunday morning worship service. So we invite you to come back on out, tune back in, and uh, join us for another awesome, awesome day. And as you see, uh, we have our links on the screens, our Venmo and our Cash App. Anybody online, if you would like to give through online, we do have our, our links in the comments. And Rhiannon, may, can you raise your hand, please? In the back, if you want to give through debit, Rhiannon is in the back to help you with that. If you would like to give through cash, we have our ushers out here. After we pray, we will release them to collect the offering. Now, in Hebrews chapter 13, it tells us, and don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. Those are the sacrifices that please God. God is saying this morning, when you've sacrificed, not only will he increase you, but he will bless and increase others as well. So the blessing that flows through you will go into others, towards others as well. And, what, and how many of us know that God, he not only wants to bless us, he wants to bless our neighbor. He wants to bless uh, the person on the street, on the corner, the person walking by. He wants to bless everyone around us, but he can only use, do that when we let him use us and work through us. So we challenge everyone in house this morning and online. If you've been here for a couple of months, you're no longer a visitor, you're a member now, and we want to invite you to please help sow into the kingdom, partner with, with uh, God in this so that we continue to reach out to his community and bring the people who are lost and hurting in. If this is your first time or if you're just visiting, we want to welcome you. And uh, we want to let you know we don't, we don't expect you to give this morning. We don't expect you to... Um, we don't expect anything from you. We just want to bless you with this word. We want to bless you this morning with uh, what we've been giving out. So please don't feel pressured to give at all. We welcome you this morning. And, um, and so at this time, we want to pray over the tithe and offering. So this morning, Father, we come before you and we thank you for this time together, Father God. We praise you for everything that you have done through us and in us, Father. We ask you, Father God, continue to send us to your people, to those who are more in need than we are, Father God, to continue to sow those seeds of, of hope and encouragement into others, Father. In any way, we, can't, we ask you, Father God, to continue to send those people who, who are in need, Father God, that we may sow into them, Father. And we ask you, as this tithe and offering is being collected, Father God, that this, these funds that they are pleasing to you father god and as they go into your kingdom and and continue to build your kingdom father god that you would uh, as we come to partner with you you would continue to bless father your ministry father god your church father god your people father god so that they can continue father in all that they do father god and we ask you, Father, that if anybody is not able to give, everybody who is able to give, to bless them accordingly to their heart, Father. We thank you, Father, for everyone here on live and in-house, Father, for all that they've done for your kingdom and through your kingdom, Father God. And we bless them, Father, with more provision, more, more finances, Father God, all that you have in store for them, Father. We praise you this morning. We worship you this morning, Father God. And we thank you, Father, for everything that you have done for us and through us, Father God. Thank you, Father. And in the name of mighty Jesus, we say amen and amen. So as we release the ushers to collect the offering, I'd like to ask you to help me welcome back up Pastor Simon as he gives our closing blessing. Praise God. Praise God. So right now, it's a custom that we pronounce a blessing. If everybody can stand up right now, so we can pronounce a blessing. I want to, before we do a blessing, I want everybody to, to stay in fellowship because we like to uh, break bread here. We like to fellowship and eat and stuff. And it's just a, a great time. It's just a great time to get to know one another and, and stuff and, uh, and just eat. I, I believe in that, you know, here at Chapel Change, because if you read in the Bible, Jesus was eating himself through the gospel. Jesus was everywhere, right? He was at a party. He was at weddings, right? I'm like, man, Jesus, you're getting fed, you know? <laughs> They're hooking you up, you know? So we believe in that. We believe in uh, breaking bread with one another. Amen? So stay in a uh, uh, fellowship and stuff. It's a uh, 
wonderful time. So right now we're going to uh, pronounce a blessing. So if you can, everybody online, uh, please uh, put your hands out in a receptive posture to receive the blessing of the Lord. And if you can't stand up, just put your arms up. Just put your arms up in a receptive posture because God wants to bless you. Amen? In the name of the Father, for His never-ending love for us. In the name of the Son who died on the cross for our iniquities. In the name of the Holy Spirit that helps revive us, refresh us, renew us with the power of heaven. May you go in the protection and the blessing of the Lord in Jesus mighty name and we all say amen and amen 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 so we love you we love you we love you more so Jesus loves you and God bless